Okay, welcome everyone to the second in a series of tutorials on the camera tracker node for NUCAX. In this second tutorial, we'll look at using lens distortion with the camera tracker. So let's just revisit the footage we solved in the first tutorial. So this is a nice sequence. We've got a camera tracker here. Got lots of nice good tracks that we've solved. And we've got a camera. So this was the camera solve we had before. But we didn't use any lens distortion information in this shot, or any known focal length. But actually we shot a lens grid. So let's just read that in. And have a look at that. Okay, a lens grid gives you lots and lots of nice 2D points, showing you how the image is distorted. So if I use the Lens Distortion node in Nuke, I can actually do a grid analysis here. So if we analyze that grid, we can calculate the Lens Distortion parameters. OK, so now we've got the distortion parameters. We can use this in two different ways. We can either undistort the plates, create a camera tracker, and track and solve off the undistorted footage. Camera tracker. So I would retrack from the undistorted plate. The other way is actually just to put the lens distortion parameters into the camera tracker. So here we've got a camera tracker that's tracked off the original distorted plate. What I'm going to do is just set a known lens here, copy the parameters in. And now I can solve in the camera tracker using the tracks for the distorted plates, but calculate a camera for the undistorted footage. So I can undistort the plate using the camera tracker. Hit solve. And the camera I get out at the end is for the undistorted plate. But actually, now that I'm using the undistorted plate, or the lens for the undistorted plate, I can go in and set a known focal length. So this was with a prime lens. Twenty-four millimeters. I can resolve with a twenty-four millimeter focal length. Okay, so this is the ideal scenario. I had a lens grid. I can get the best possible lens distortion estimation and I can solve my camera in using the known exact focal length for that plate. So I'm pretty confident in the 3D points I get out of this and the camera path I get out. Okay, so the next shot I've got is what you can do if you don't have lens grids. Okay, so here's a shot with a nice bit of distortion in it. So you can see the edge of the road here. It's all pretty distorted. So I've already tracked this sequence. Let's have a look. So you can actually see the distortion coming out in the tracks a little bit here. So if I go away and solve this with all those distorted tracks, you can see what it does to the 3D world. Okay, so let's switch to 3D and have a look. So what you can see here is that you've got a really curved point cloud coming out for what should be a pretty straight street. So if we create our scene, let's have a look at the camera path that we're getting out of that. So that's really curved. And that's essentially caused by the lens distortion in the footage. So there's different ways you can handle lens distortion if you haven't shot a lens grid. 
you can go into the lens tab and you can ask the camera tracker to estimate a lens for you. So you can say unknown lens. So we can go away and solve again. So what this will do is it will try and estimate the best possible lens up front and use that in the solve. So it's initialising its best estimate of those lens distortion parameters. So this is very similar to the image analysis in you get in the lens distortion node. Okay, so let's have a look at how that solve worked when it was trying to calculate the lens distortion. Let's have a look in 3D and the path still looks pretty bowed. If we close look at those lens parameters, hasn't really done very much there. So we can undistort the footage. Have a look at the output of the camera tracker. It's underestimated that lens distortion. It's too severe for it to cope with in this shot. So this is going to show you a kind of a nice trick I like to do. We're going to use the grid and the line analysis and the lens distortion node to initialize our distortion for the camera tracker. So let's pick a nice frame with lots of distortion in it. I'm going to go to the line analysis. I'm going to switch on drawing mode. And let's just put down some rough points here. So all I'm doing is drawing the rough curves in for the straight lines. I'm not being too exact here because I want it just to initialize the camera tracker. Let's add a few more in. I would ordinarily take a little bit more care than this. It's quite hard with a trackpad. Okay, let's just analyze from the lines and have a look at that distortion. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm tell the camera tracker to refine a known lens and copy these parameters down. They look a little bit better. And let's go away and solve that camera again using that line analysis to initialize the lens distortion. Okay. So what the camera tracker has done is it's picked up that initial lens model, it's calculated the 3D points, and it's optimized the parameters here for the lens to make sure that the reprojection errors are all sm as small as possible. So we've got a nice solve error coming in here, 1.1. So let's have a look in 3D and have a look at that camera path. So there we go, nice and straight. Okay, so that's the end of the second tutorial on the camera tracker node, how to use lens distortion. Ideally, you want to shoot a lens grid and you can use that to set a known lens model for the solve to get the camera model for the undistorted plates. What I've shown you here is a little trick you can do if you don't shoot a lens grid. You can use the align analysis and the lens distortion node, bring that in and use refine known lens on the camera tracker.